Cause this, this the this the thing with the fake spiritual stuff. Those people, they just want to not follow rules and instructions, which is understandable. But they don't do the real inner work of my traumas, my hangups. Uh, how can I grow and be less reactive? Like meaning like angry or whatever you working on. They just want to say I'm spiritual. Like as a trend, they don't really do the work. I'm looking at these girls and they filters. And I'm really looking like, yo, this is bugging me out. I'm like, this is weird. And then I'm like this. I said, okay. So think about this with a girl. She got makeup on. Right? Then on top of the makeup, because she she painted another face on top of her real face. Then she put a filter on top of that fake face. I said, so where are you at? What's up? Welcome to the show. Hey, appreciate you for having me. So, a lot on your channel, you've talked about in the past the difference between human love and universal love. Can you kind of make that distinction and go in depth with it? Uh, yeah, I was gonna do a video on this too. So, uh, human love is petty. <laughs> like, it's about what you can do for me, and. It's really, to some degree, when they say love not real, it's because most people don't love people. They are infatuated with people or they lusting after people. That's really the most states that majority of human beings live in. It. They don't really love each other. They just using each other for the time being. But real universal love is unconditional. Like you're going to love the person no matter what, even if they acting up, they're already doing what you want or not doing what you want. You're still going to love them. And, and even greater, you just got love for life. That's why people, when they get their heart broke, they think the world is over because you made that person your world because you only gave love to that person. You never allowed love in any other arena of your life. Yeah, I, I think I think what you're saying on that is perfect. In terms of being infatuated with other people, people will assume and fully believe that it is love. But once that person leaves them, then they, then they say, oh, I hate you, and they no longer have that love for them. So when right. I think about that, it's like, in that case, you never really did love them. You just thought you did. Right, exactly. And that's so you can tell you love somebody, even if they break up with you or do you foul, you still like, I wouldn't wish nothing bad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, but, but exactly. Whenever you go your separate ways, if you truly love them, you're going to want the best for them still. Mm -hmm. So in terms of universal love, how, for people who aren't really aware of that, how do you uh what's the word how do you urge people to go and seek that well it's it's kind of difficult because like with the society you conditioned to only love like uh persons so like instead of giving like a super woo -wah spiritual answer i think the best way for the average person to try to seek universal love is to find something that they love doing like an activity or a purpose, then you'll start to kind of get the picture of like love is bigger than just this is this person. Cause you, cause really your purpose is is life. Like it's what life, what you're here to do. So if you love that, you really love in life. Yeah. And I also think, I'm not sure if this is something you've talked about before, but just the, the joy of existence, like just the fact that you're alive is one of the most beautiful things ever. Because right, right. You, you being able to be born is a one in one billion chance. So right. to not appreciate that is. Oh, yeah, for sure. The joy of existence is crazy. Like you'll start to you'll start to think everything is like funny and a joke because it really is like it's like, what the fuck am I even doing? <laughs> Bro, it don't make no sense. It don't make sense at all. I'll think about, you know, when I'm in school or whatever I'm doing, whether I'm at work, it's, you know. In the grand scheme of things, I think to myself, it's like, yeah, I'm doing this for money and all that, but like, what the fuck does any of this even, like, it, it doesn't even, we, we man made, made all of this shit up. Right. But what do you think, because some people think like the meaning of life is, you know, to be happy and this and all, all that. I've thought about the concept of, you know, the joy of life and the meaning of life is like just experiencing everything and just existing. Well, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I think that's probably the meaning too, because happiness is a fleeting state. Like even Buddha and all the great spiritual teachers, they say the same thing. Like people, like people painted the images of the Buddha like he always smiling just for like symbolic references. But in reality, I feel like most enlightened beings, they probably they 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 fluctuate in a state of detachment mainly, meaning like center and poise, and then they could float up to like great heights of love or joy. But for the most part, they stay at a center because they transcend duality. Like if you're gonna be happy, that means you're gonna accept sadness. But if you stay in the middle, you 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 impervious to either side of the coin. Because if you chase right. happiness, that could that that's a psychological trap too. Because you're gonna be like, damn, why I'm not happy? But you're not happy because you're saying you're not happy. <laughs> right. And what you believe in your mind is your thoughts and how you feel that literally creates your reality around you. Right. So it's just, I mean, I think you did a video on that in, in the past. You know, Al, Al, Alan Watts is, you know, he, he he's talked about, you know, chasing happiness. It's, it's a never ending cycle because, like you said, right. it's a psychological phenomenon where you're always chasing it and you can never get to it because you always feel like whatever you're doing is never enough. Right. Even, even, one of the biggest ways to realize that happiness and joy and love, even though like they create things that they could be overwhelming, is doing mushrooms or LSD. You be so happy, so geeked up, so hyped. You be like, yo, I want to be back to normal. You be like, I don't want to be like, I'm tired of being so happy and energy. Like, I want to go back to normal. Like, it's weird that humans is, like we like that. Like, we think we want to be happy all the time. If you was happy all the time, you wouldn't want to be happy all the time. You be like, yo, can I chill? Right, and that's and that's a part of the dual duality of life and accepting all the different things, all the different things and emotions you have to go to because you know it's like like you just said if you were happy all the time you would get bored of that like you, your right. your mind fluctuates and you have all these different emotions because it's like it's it's the universe speaking through you and essentially is you and you know allow you to experience all that all that all the difference in the emotion and experiences of life so that you're not just doing the same thing and feeling the exact same thing 24 7. right even like certain enlightened beings like who like ramana maharshi who he transcended to the point like he really don't do nothing no more like he said he really just sat in like uh, i don't want to say a diaper but it almost looked like a diaper type thing and he just he was like just did nothing really for like forever but it's like me i would get bored of that like i get bored sometimes when i'm super focused celibate only to do my work that I want to be like a human again. I'm like, all right, let me drink, let me smoke, let me go help chill with girls or do something stupid because it's just like, it's fun. <laughs> right, and I think that's, and doing all that stuff, you know, it makes you human and that's a part of like the kind of childlike state that's in it within all of us, but when we become adults, we kind of like nudge it to the side and pretend it doesn't exist anymore because, you know, right. the, the fact going out, having fun, doing dumb shit, that's like, because when you were a kid, you did. You didn't give a shit about anything. You did. You do whatever, whether it was good, bad. You just wanted to do it, so you did it. There were no boundaries in your line of sight and your reality. But then, you right. know, as we go through school, we go up, grow up. You know, we're taught that life has all these boundaries and there's all these rules and social standards that we have to play by. But in terms of right. the grand scheme of reality in the universe, none of that shit actually exists at all. The universe don't care. As a matter of fact, I was. I'm gonna do a video today probably about detachment and my part of video gonna be god don't care so neither should you like the universe do not give up what you do it do not care because if it did all these people wouldn't be doing crazy stuff like this like people think i'm crazy for stuff i want to do i'm like, i don't want to hurt nobody it's people that that go out and hurt other people and mass and the universe just let it happen so you're telling me the universe is mad at me because i make girls give me their money yeah okay no it ain't <laughs> i'm so <laughs> harmless like what are you talking about right and it's, it's just, it's just crazy because I mean, going back to what we just said about, you know, how none of this, none of this shit actually matters, but we all, the reason it works, the reason our society and government functions is because 99% of us believe that that's the way it works. We, I, like I tell people, we believe money has value. So it has, it has value. It's, it's a fucking piece of paper. It's a number. It means right, nothing right. in the grand scheme of things. Right. And that's why I got, you know, when you get like, cause you know, first in spirituality, you usually start from like sleep to what you would call woke. And when you get stuck in the woke phase, you get mad at people because like you wish other people would wake up. 
And I had to realize, like, damn, so many people, they, because I, I don't like, matter of fact, I can't say this all day. <laughs> all I'm going to say is this. Certain people at the top that take advantage of the little people, the little people allow it to happen because y'all accept it. But I'm like, what you going to do? Well, that's what people want to do. They they want to follow what they're doing. So I'm going to get mad trying to get other people to not do it when, hey, that's what they, that's their choice. They gave power to it, so. I know exactly what you're saying. When I first got into spirituality and all this stuff, you know, because it, it, it's like it's like an enlightening thing to waking up to all this stuff and realizing, you know, all the different stuff that's been hidden from you about life and reality. And so you want to share that with people. But when you share it with people, people are like, you're, you're fucking crazy, bro. And, at, right. and then at, at first, you know, you get mad and you're like, why does no one want to? But then you get to that point where you just you have that confidence in yourself and the knowledge that you hold so that you don't need other people to believe it i mean i remember you made a, a video about some people that are religious and you know that there's they get very angry if somebody doesn't believe the same thing that they do because you know they don't fully believe in it themselves so they need the validation from other people you know right, to believe right. it and if they say it to them and they don't believe it then they go fucking insane right and, and like i said like you said the perfect example is they don't really believe it like, cause if you really believed and it was really good for you, you wouldn't care. You'd be like, all right, cool. I'm, I got Jesus and that's fine. Y'all can do whatever y'all want. Like, it was, matter of fact, I seen a post on Facebook. It was like, <laughs> somebody going to say, I'm mad that y'all replaced prayer for manifestation and y'all replaced God with the universe. Like, no, you're really mad because your outdated belief system is about to get wiped away because the universe, that's how it works. The world wasn't always Christian. So we go through cycles. So Christianity was a big cycle in America. It's crumbling down and it's crashing and it's going to get overtaken by spirituality. And people who stuck in that mind frame, they're going to not like what the world going to turn into. What do you, because, you know, along my journey of all this, you know, I, I, you know, you go on TikTok sometimes and you see all these girls who they're like, they're into all the crystals and stuff, but then they'll go on their Snapchat stories and say, ha ha, I'm mentally ill and, you know, shit like that. So I think there's a problem with kind of like fake spirituality being pushed a little bit. But what, what do you, what, what's your take on that? I mean, it's like, it's like, cause this, the, this, the thing with the fake spiritual stuff, those people, they just want to not follow rules and instructions, which is understandable, but they don't do the real inner work of my traumas, my hangups, uh, how can I grow and be less reactive, like meaning like angry or whatever you're working on. They just want to say I'm spiritual, like as a trend. They don't really do the work. And it really shows, and it's sad because I watch, sometimes like I watch other people's channels like that do that fake spiritual stuff, and I be looking at the followers they got, and I'm like, yo, y'all really do that shit? I'm like, this person is saying nothing, and y'all believe in it, so... People just lazy. People lazy. They wanna. They want something easy to follow. Even people. Some people join my Patreon. They be like, "Oh, I thought that it was gonna be like YouTube, and it's just like, oh, you thought I was just gonna be making entertaining videos? No, it's I put actual spiritual practices in here because you only gonna get better with practice, not just watching me talk about what I think. Exactly. There's because when I first got into, you know, uh spirituality and just improving my life because I used to be depressed. It's like, you know, I got into this phase of watching all these self-improvement videos, listening to all these people and feeling like I'm making my life better. But until you take the knowledge that these people are telling you and apply it to your life, it means absolutely nothing. Right. It's mental masturbation. Exactly. So at the end of your videos, it says, Whatever you may see, think, or hear, I am not that. What does that mean? That's a quote from Nisargadha Maharaj. I consider him to be my personal guru. Like, the Tao Te Ching and Sri Nisargadha Maharaj, I look at them mainly more so, I mean, I can't even say that, but Maharaj break it down so like clear about the reality of the universe i look at him as my personal guru so he helped me what i believe i found itself because of his words like because they say 
a guru is not a certain body in a time and place. A guru is eternal because he's been dead for probably a hundred years or something. And I'm still saying he helped me. He brought me out of darkness. So, but what that means is I'm not the body because we just, this is just a specific time and place. Like it's like a placeholder. That's what a body is, a placeholder. Just like they say you, the spring, summer, fall, all the seasons change. You got different clothes. You know what I mean? I'm going to take this off, put on a better shirt. The same with a body. It's the universe wearing different clothes because it want to experience itself in different ways. Somebody, uh, somebody in my Patreon, they said, like, they think that I must have been a, a guru from India who decided to reincarnate in Earth in the inner city as a black man, like, just for the challenge of it. And I'm like, yo, that's funny because I be thinking, like, why the fuck would I... Bro, I never was like this spiritual person. Like I grew up in a Christian household. I'm from the inner city. Money, cars, clothes, and hoes. That's what I was focused on. Then I just shifted to some Hindu spirituality. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, maybe, maybe it is some truth to that. Right. But yeah, the, the, it's just temporary. Just it's just temporary. What do you think? What do you think about the ego and kind of? Because I kind of I try to tell people that you know, not your what you're not always what you're thinking and what your mind is telling you is you. You're, 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 right. you're, you, you are your mind, your mind. And it's kind of difficult to understand that your mind is a tool and it's not the real you. How, how do you explain that? Uh, I'm a, to make it simple. I feel like I not always encourage people to play sports. So especially young men, because that's where you, at least me, that's where I first learned that I'm not my mind and I'm not because it's like your mind going to tell you some stupid shit and you got to ignore it. Like when you, when you playing football and somebody bigger than you is running at you, your mind want to be a bitch. You might, oh, or no, the kid, we got to go smack them. Like we got, so you, that's the first thing of mind over matter. Or you doing morning runs. Uh, I wrestled in high school too. And that was like physically demanding. The practices was so hard, but it's like your mind want to give up. But you have to tell your mind, no, we got to keep going. So that's the example right there of your mind is being adversarial to what you trying to do. So it's clearly not me because you're trying to sabotage me right now. And I got to be the higher self and say, nope, we're going this direction. Right. And that that just goes along with, you know, everyone, so many people just, they, everyone gets in their own way. Like you have this desire to go do this or say this to someone, but then the thoughts in your mind say, no. What, what if they don't say yes with all all these contradicting and right. limiting beliefs about yourself and then you let that take control of you and then a day goes by or a month goes by and a year goes by and you say fuck i really want to do that and i didn't do it that is like because the ego this is what the ego purpose for the ego purpose is to protect you so anything that's outside of the realm of protection is going to get you to like because we live everybody be saying oh life is so hard like Bro, we used to have to fight outside all the time. Life is not hard. Like, people just be complaining about nothing because we got a soft society. But uh, the ego, as long as you got a roof over your head uh, and you eat in, your ego do not care about nothing else. You know what I'm saying? That's why it can be easy for uh, people to stay at home with their parents because in reality, it's no need really to go out on your own when you have someone taking care of you. In reality, but, and, and the ego would be like, I'm comfortable. But one of the ways I brainwash myself to not be comfortable with that is I look at it like you're homeless. You only have a home because your parents are alive. What if they die? Then you're going to be homeless. So you can't be, oh, I'm comfortable just even now with an apartment. You only have an apartment because you're paying these people rent. What if they kick you out? You're homeless. <laughs> you need to get a house. You feel me? So it's just, I do psychological tricks to tell my mind to not chill you're not chilling you know what i mean right because you know when you let every if you if you decide to just let everything go one day you know you'll you'll see the consequences of that very fast oh for sure especially like because it's cold like in india in india is warm most of the time so when i be thinking because sometimes i do be thinking maybe i'll be one of those monks that just be butt naked walking around and like really don't care but i'm like you can't do that not where i'm from we have winter it's it'll be cold as fuck. Like, you're not about to be sleeping outside. Like it, 
even like in LA, homelessness, not trying to say homelessness is cool, but I'm like, I just be thinking if I was to want to be homeless, you would probably want to be homeless somewhere warm. Because at least you could sleep on a beach or something or it's outside. It's warm enough to where you're not cold. But yeah, if you let everything go, bro, you're going to be homeless. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was saying about it the other day. I was like, you know, literally the exact scenario you're talking about, about being homeless and then a warm area because, you know, I'm thinking like I'm from Jersey. And, you know, imagine being in, in the city and just this time of year, fucking absolutely freezing. You have no money. You have no right. food. You're, you're begging people for money. And it's like, you know, it's just, it's just suffering. And of course, right. you know, you know, suffering is a very important um, key to life and growth. But in terms of the suffering of being homeless and not having anything, it's very, it would be very, I would imagine it would be very difficult to develop your mind spiritually and all these different concepts when you're struggling to survive. Right. Now, on the flip side, though, this is, once again, I'm not trying to say homelessness is good, but this is the good side of homelessness. A lot of Indian spiritual teachers, some of them, they go through a process of renunciation to where they become beggars. Even Buddha did this before he found what he thought was the right path to where you depend on other people for food. Like they'll just travel around because what that do too is it make you so humble and it literally, it destroy your ego because you're literally dependent on existence completely. Like, cause I'm not even going to take care of myself. I'm waiting for others to do it for me. So if you do it in a right frame, you can grow super fast spiritually with being like homeless and having nothing because you're going to be, you're going to be closer to the self. Like, cause that's, that's what the self is anyway it's non-desire so you you're not gonna care you, you're really not gonna care how, how do you explain to people that you know the universe and god is within you because that's that's a I feel like that's a foreign concept to a lot of people right and and this is the sad part because in the bible jesus literally says this in luke chapter 17 verse 20 he says the kingdom of heaven is within you it does not come with observation nor will you say see here or see there he said you know what i'm saying and this is the book most people claim that this is their religion and they don't even read the shit so the way i would explain it is even like all right, it's about to get deep even within is a dualistic concept <laughs> to transcend duality you're no longer even looking at within and without because it's all one we only say within and without because the ego and the mind is separating you from existence or so it thinks but in reality it's all one it's all present you know what i'm saying it ain't no within and without so really the whole reality is the kingdom of god and it's just how your ego perceives it i also think about the concept of you know kind of the the duality of how you're always alone but you're always connected to everything and everyone at the same time because you know i can i can look at you and i can look at this water bottle and then everyone i meet in my life and you know we're essentially like the same person not in terms of personality and how we act and how we live our lives but in the grand scheme of things we are all one but then you can also think to yourself how you know it's like i'm here right now and you're on the other side of the screen and everyone i talk to it's like you know we're physically speaking in our senses aspect we're separated and it's like y you you feel that you feel that separation of like that's why so many of us have like that hole within inside of us of that void that you're always trying to fix right even like just look at it like this to look at it like a dream and you're a dream because this is the crazy part the yogis you know when we begin like basic we say there's the waking state the sleep state in the dreams uh, state. Right now, we're in the waking state. But real yogis who got true understanding, they say that this is a dream state too. This is no different than a dream state. It's just the, it has a prolonged time, time doing this, but in, our, in the way we perceive it, it's a prolonged time. And it has continuity because our brain is trying to, the ego is trying to make patterns so that we're not just like wake up every day like, oh, where we at? <laughs> You know what I mean? But in your dream, your 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 brain creates the whole reality of, of your dream. So literally everything in that dream is you and a projection. So when you get that understanding in real life, then you're going to see the same thing. Like I'll be looking at objects in my house and I'm like, damn, this is my, re my dream reality because 
everything in existence shared the existence with you in that moment. It wouldn't exist if I wasn't perceiving it. And when when you're able to embody that belief and that knowing of how the world works, it's like everything becomes a little bit less stressful, and everything becomes a little bit like yeah. I know, like I know I have to do what I have to do to survive and to live and to prosper and to have success in my own um in my own way but in in the grand I always I keep saying it but in the grand scheme of things it's like you know what whatever happens whether it's inc my life goes incredibly well or incredibly bad at the end of the day it is what it is life is just right. and at the end it's it's not really going to matter Right, and it was and it was a death there anyway. Like you couldn't you couldn't change it anyway. That's another a trick to keep you from stressing. Is that you wouldn't be able to change it because it was already. What they were like, let's say like the Big Bang. When the Big Bang happened, like one of the analogies I like that somebody said is just like a, a, a when you play in pool and you break in the when you break in the balls. I mean, that's the Big Bang. Everything that happens after that was already do 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 do. It's the domino effect. You think, how the hell you think you got some type of control? You wasn't the one that started that fire back then. So you not the one that's keeping it going right now. It's just going. Even like here, another one is here. I love here. You don't consciously grow your hair. It just happens. You don't constantly go old or young or go to the bathroom. It just happens. It's just the ego. Once it gets to the mind level, the ego think it's doing everything. Because that's why it's the ego. And it's it's just... You get to that point and you just, you, you realize, you realize everything that's going on. And so what do you, what do you think about the aspect of free will? I think that shit is an illusion and I think it don't exist at all. <laughs> <laughs> like people be, and I'm going to do a video on that too, because they were saying like, how do you, at one point you say manifestation, but at one point you say ain't no free will. I'm going to break it down deeper, but it's because like you, this how no free will don't exist. Number one, you didn't even name yourself, bro. <laughs> how how you think you free? You didn't even give yourself a name. Your parents did that. Number two, your whole personality and energy, it comes from where you were born. You didn't choose to be born where you're born, and that's why you talk the way you talk, act the way you act. Perceive you did not choose this. So what do you why do you think that you have a choice? Cause the ego like to feel like it's special. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're programmed when we're younger to, you know, act a, act act a certain way, talk a certain way, and the culture in our lives and stuff, none of that was dictated by us. And we have all these programs in our mind of how we function in certain situations that unless you become aware of it, it's like it, it's fully running on your subconscious mind. You know, the, exa the example I heard from a doctor, his name is Dr. Bruce Lipton, is like, you know, the, the difference between the, the conscious and unconscious mind is, you know, a conscious mind is your... You're going to the destination and, you know, you haven't been there before. So you're looking at the GPS, you're being conscious of your turns. Um, but then let's see you have the same store every fucking Sunday, right? And you drive there and it's 15 minutes away. You don't remember the past 15 minutes that you used to drove there because it was completely all the turns you were making, the time you took to get there, that was on your subconscious mind. You were not right. aware of what you were doing. Right. Even even like uh, the perfect example is falling asleep while driving. <laughs> so who was driving? If you were asleep, who was driving? There was the universe moving through you. So it just went to go prove that even though you shouldn't be sleeping and driving, but that just goes to show you that it's something else operating and the ego is not really, even like my horizon was like, you don't need the sense of I. Like you was living well before you had this sense of I and you're going to live well after you deplete it because it's going to keep going. Like they say, enlightened beings, they look at it like this. Before enlightenment, I mean, post enlightenment they say you're like a a bow and arrow that was already pulled and shot you feel me so that's like you being born but once you become realized the arrow don't stop because you oh shit i don't exist i'm the universe that don't mean that karma is going to stop acting on you you just gonna have a different perspective of why it's acting on you what do you think happens after we die shit i guess <laughs> Bro, one of my favorite, it's this anime called Death Note. It's one of my favorite animes. It, uh, so, and in between, like, the the frames, sometimes they'll pull quotes. So, one of the quotes, because they, they post, like, they post rules of the Death Note in between, like, this thing. 
Yeah, one of the uh, things was all humans will eventually die. The place they go is called, and it was like in Japanese, but it translated to nothing. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that's deep. Because you don't go nowhere. You never went nowhere. So you don't. Is that all you're going to do is, well, you ain't, ain't no you. Like, oh, it's just going to keep going. Like, that's just what's happening. It just keep going. And then now some yogis say that it depends on what your mindset is. Like, let's say you 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 believe in Christianity. So you say, oh, my God, I'm going to go to hell because you might actually go and see hell because you were thinking that you created it. Versus if you die in bliss and realize I'm the self, not dual, then you'll go back to the ether and you won't come back to earth. So sometimes they say it depends on what you were thinking last before you die. But I think, like I said, no free will, nothing going to happen. Like you're just going to go back to nothingness, which is why you might as well live it up while you're here right now. Yeah, because I think about, you know, you know, we're also like uh, so many people are so afraid of like that nothingness. And it's like, Think about what life was like before you were born. Exactly. Is that so bad? Right. Right. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When it comes to death and birth, like, bro, before you were born, you were already there. <laughs> then even in deep sleep, in deep sleep, you go back to the same place. You don't, you just, because once again, your mind creates the reality. So when your mind is turned off, the universe is turned off. You are the projector and creator of the universe. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've heard people talk about, you know, near-death experiences. And, for example, someone who believes in Christianity and, and you know, they, they, have, they have the experience, they're about to die, and they go, oh, I saw God or I saw hell or whatever, or I saw heaven, whatever it was. And then they go back and they tell the story. And then you think to yourself, is that what actually happened? Or is it, was it just your mind projecting that? And right. since you wholeheartedly believe that, that's what it just made you saw. Or see. Exactly. That's that's exactly what it is. Cause it's just like just like I said, I had a dream <laughs> that I was that I was running down on Kim Kardashian. I would not even know she had existed if she wasn't plastered on media and conscious. So my brain had her to work with. Versus if I'm born in an area that don't know nothing about Christianity, don't know, I would never even think to think that because it mm-hmm. never got put in my brain. Right. You know, I'd say and and Scientists say that in your dreams, every single person you ever see in your dream is you've seen them in reality before. Even because yeah. you, I mean, even you'll see a lot of people in your dream that don't seem recognizable, but it's like you were just in a in a mall one day and they walked past right. you them for a split second in your brain. But it's insane right. how your brain has processed that and kept that in the back there mm-hmm. in your mind, and they created that when you go to sleep in a different reality that that person yeah. exists and it has some sort of meaning. Yep, because they say your brain can't make up faces. So you every like yeah. So everybody you see, we you seen them before, and it's just like you said, it's the subconscious just taking notes, or even if you feel like, damn, like this feel familiar, like what the fuck, or you look at somebody like, damn, do I know them from somewhere? Like, you might have seen them somewhere. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there's, I mean, what we're so many of us aren't aware of is because of the subconscious mind and all the programs we have and everything we've seen and even if it's in just a split second we don't realize that there's so many things going on in the background in our mind that we just aren't aware of and so many things that we will never be aware of but it's happening even though you're not aware of it that doesn't mean it isn't happening right because it would be it would be too overwhelming for you to be consciously aware of every little thing going on that's why the ego is selfish and like focused because that give you it give you the sense of me, so you can function in the world. Because if you really, and it's the problem with s- spiritual people, like actual spiritual people, uh, and they say like this is like because I'm a Pisces and they say this is a Pisces thing. Sometimes we be so spiritual detached that we don't do nothing or that we don't have boundaries because we don't we don't perceive it as boundaries. So, like, you could become lazy or you could become, like, just too trusting of people because you just accept people off rip because you don't look at them like they're super different. Yeah. You, you, you could, but yeah, like you just said, you could just start to trust everything and everyone around you, even though, because it's like you have the awareness of, like, 
all right, like all this stuff doesn't really matter. And like, everyone's like, deep down, yeah, like, I guess they're a good person and stuff. But like everyone else you're dealing with is not thinking the same thing you are. So they're acting in all of their, their egoic ways and all, and, and what animalistic desires they have. So that they're not, they're in, you guys are on a whole different spectrum of awareness and life. And I learned this, I learned this two ways. I learned this one with a girl. She was like the girl that I was with right before I really got on my super spiritual stuff. And I, and I, I, when I went through that awakening, I treated her way different. Like I actually treated her better and she left and I'm like, damn, I'm like, I knew that toxic shit worked. Like, cause as soon as I stopped being toxic and like treated her better, she left. And I'm like, and, and I was being so open and honest with her. And she just was like still like high in the truth and i'm like yo why are you look? and i'm like bro you realize that not her you know what i'm saying then i had to realize bro so don't just because you understand don't don't now you be super trust no you still be player but just you're gonna be more honorable about being player right and you're just more conscious of everything that's going on and right and in, in a way you know i, I don't want to i don't want to structure it like uh you know you're better than other people or, or anything like that. It's just, you have more awareness of everything in the grand scheme of things that's going on. So you can pinpoint during certain things and realize certain things and take certain actions that you are now, because you have this knowledge, you are more aware of what you can do to get what you want and stuff like that. Right. It's scary. Yeah, it's scary too. Cause then you see like, cause I, I hate to say this, but Sometimes I really be thinking like, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, no, I'm going to play a fight, but ain't no hate it. It's the truth. Most people are NPCs. Like the same way you go to a game and, <laughs> matter of fact, I just started playing the Harry Potter game. It's fire, by the way. But it's funny walking past the NPC <laughs> and they're like, oh, hey, uh, can you help me? And I just ignore them. And like, but they don't say nothing else. Like they don't be like, oh, man, F you, man. But I really need, bro, they just. When you show up, it is their job to say, oh, can you help me? To see if you want to do that side story. Then I like when sometimes I go past the NPC, because like at least in GTA, if you run past somebody, they're like, fight yourself. You know what I'm saying? But in Harry Potter, they don't even say nothing. <laughs> like, I'm, and they, they jumping around, they're not even saying nothing. <laughs> but the reason why I brought that up, how you can tell somebody at NPC, they literally... They have a set program in their head and they cannot deviate from it. Like, I got family members, friends that is like, yo, I know what they're going to say. I know what they're going to do. It's so predictable and it's scary. It's like, bro, you don't even know. Like, bro, I know you. Like, it's it's so scary how I know what you're going to do and what you're going to say. And, like, you, you're the same person. Like, it, it's, that's what I think. Most people really are NPCs. So they don't even, and then when you think about this, they don't even mean to hurt you. They don't even mean because they can't control it. Stupid. They can't control it. Because we're programmed with all the programs. It's like no, no, 99% of people aren't aware that they even have subconscious programming. So there's literally no chance of them even changing it. And I also think there are like, there's certain people that are just so programmed in their beliefs and how they live their life that it is literally... I don't want to say impossible, but it's 99% impossible to even get them to remotely change at all. No, in fact, I had, I had this debate, you know, because feminism and men versus women, this is a big topic. I had this debate with my grandma and my aunt. I said, yo, so I was telling them, I'm like, yeah, most girls today can't cook. So I'm like, I'm like, and I mean, me, I'm just, I'm just old school. That's how I look at it. I'm old school. I feel like if you with me, you gonna be doing the cooking and, and all that. I'm not doing that, bro. I'm making money, majority of the money you cook. Is that so hard to do? So my grandma was like, oh, you better watch it. That's sexist. And then so I said to her, my aunt, I said, okay, so who job is to take out the trash? My aunt laughed and said, huh, that's different. My grandma was like, well, uh, uh, yeah, you're a program. So it's sexist for me to expect you to cook, but y'all expect us to take out the trash. You know what I'm saying? Like just simple stuff like that. It'll show you like, Y'all don't, y'all don't really think about your beliefs and what you're saying. Uh, e even like me with my, with my, what people would think is like my, my flaws and my ignorance. I'm very aware of my flaws and my ignorance. And I could choose to change it. Or I could choose to say, I don't give a fuck. I want to, I want to stay like this person. I don't, I don't care. I'm not changing the way I think, even though like, like for example, with like the, the ism in the game and all that, like 
sometimes I be thinking like, damn, am I wrong for thinking like this sometimes? But then I'm like, the way the reaction I get, like the way it worked, I just can't change. Like I feel like I want you awaken to certain levels of information. I can't go revert and say, oh, well, that's not the truth. Let me start acting different. Like I don't, it's hard to do that for me. Yeah. And I think, and I think just when you be yourself and what you authentically believe and how you are, people who are meant for you will gravitate to that. And the people that don't bung with that will go away. And that's, that's just how it is because everyone, you know, everyone's putting on this mask when they go out in public, when they hang out with certain people. And it's like, nobody's ever getting to know the real you. Like you would have so many more better, better relationships, better friendships, if you were actually yourself. Because the people who actually right. fuck with that part of you are going to spend time with you, and the people that aren't right, right for you are going to leave, and that's fine. Right. No. Yeah. That's that's very important, and I, I, that's another sad thing about like reality, like with the NPCs, you can't even have real relationships because they being fake. Even like society with the woke culture, I say it's creating a society of sociopaths. Because what a sociopath do is they watch people and they mimic what behavior they, they deem is right. Okay, let me straighten up. Let me, you're being fake. So if society's saying, oh, we all have to think like this, you're naturally creating people that's going to be hiding themselves. So who are you really talking to? Matter of fact, another thing, this off topic, but I was on Mushroom. Was it Mushroom? No, it was tabs. I was on tabs. So I started, I'm looking at this girl. <laughs> Yo, you know, everything looked crazy on tabs. So I'm looking at these girls and they filters. And I'm really looking like, yo, this is bugging me out. I'm like, this is weird. And then I'm like this. I said, okay. So think about this with a girl. She got makeup on. Right? Then on top of the makeup, because she, she painted another face on top of her real face. Then she put a filter on top of that fake face. I said, so where are you at? Eliminated yourself out of existence because you don't like yourself. So I'm not even looking at, well, I'm already not looking at you, but now I'm really not because you put a mask on top of a mask. And then, and then they're going to say, I want a real man. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> they're going to say they want a real man. Come on now. <laughs> and and uh, you you want somebody real and you're not even real yourself. How, how does that work? And that's why they gonna attract people that only attracted to that. Cause even me, like I hate to be rude, but I had a girl. I had a lot, I got catfished a couple times, and it's like one time this girl I I seen her first without no makeup. I'm like, what the hell? Like, bro. <laughs> Look, and then they get mad like, oh well, we got her. No, you don't, because if you was just your real self from the beginning. I would have either not talked to you or I would have just accepted it. But since you came fake, you got to keep up the fake image. Like they'll get up and go put you so they could put on makeup so they could hurry up and hide and transfer. Bro, you the one that's being fake. It ain't my fault that when I seen your real face, I got scared. And then it, it's just, it goes along with like, you're, you're like in terms of that, you know, you putting on the mask, like trying to attract someone by putting on a mask, that person is then going to expect you to act like that for the rest of your relationship for the rest of your time together because they believe that that is you but you were just right. trying to uh, you were just trying to put on a mask so that you could do whatever yo and see that's when it come to like we're like men too with like dates and the reason why men women say men switch up because in the beginning the man trying so hard to impress her he taking her out to eat he putting on his best dress da -da -da -da. But then when he get her, he stopped. So she'd be like, oh, well, because he was trying to get you and he got you, so he stopped. That's why me personally, I ain't gonna lie, I've been changing my philosophy a little bit. I think I maybe might start taking girls on a date, but that's why I don't take girls on a date because I don't do that. I don't do that shit. So you about to accept me for what I do or I'm not going to do it because I'm that's not me. Or, oh, I'm a paying your bills and bro i'm not doing that that ain't me so i'm not man don't be wrong i would if i trust you enough like all right we a team be a partner but i'm not about to come through the door spending money on you like that's not that's not that's not what i do at all the culture nowadays is insane of guys you know paying girls bills just because they, they like they pay them to send them pictures and shit like that and it's like oh, what, what are you doing <laughs> hey listen though this, see this is why i like it though on, on the flip on the ism when it comes to some game this is why i like it 
they don't even know that why you sending her money, she's giving it to me. I know girls, I, I know girls that I talk to that couple of them that go on dates just because they're hungry. Bless you. Bless you. Thanks. They, they, they go on dates just because they're hungry. And I'm and it's like you feeding her and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask her for it. And then she said, Well, I'm gonna well, ask him for it. That's all the game is, is when a girl really like you, you don't gotta you don't gotta do that. <laughs> and matter of fact, she will give it to you. So the dudes that don't realize that they keep buying and spending money, go all OnlyFans girls. OnlyFans girls is taking that money that you giving her and giving it to her boyfriend. The game. That's just the game. Yeah, it, like people, I, I always tell people the best relationships and the best girls that come into your life are the ones that come naturally. You don't even have to try. The girls that like have gravitated towards me the most and, and been attracted to me the most, my looks, my personality, whatever it is, it's because I didn't have to, I didn't have to jump through all the hoops and put in the effort to try and get her to like me. But if you try and get a girl to like her, it like you, it's like she doesn't even like you at first and you're trying to get her to like you. It's like if she doesn't like you, fuck it. There's so many other right. people out there. Just just right. find somewhere else. Right. I like to say that they love your dirty drawers. Like, they're going to love you in your raw state. Like, because me, I like it when a girl come up to me and, like, I don't got no haircut. My my beard growing, my struggle beard growed out, and I'm wearing dirty clothes, and she still come up to me. Bro, that's, that's your soulmate right there. She said through all that and said, I still want you. Yeah, that's the one for you. Exactly. Uh, be before before we finish up, I wanted to ask you one more question. For people who for people who are, you know, on the spiritual path and kind of feeling a little bit disconnected from it, because I know times in my life I've, you know, been really focused on spirituality and, you know, all the practices and then, you know, life gets in the way. You have to work more, you have to do this and that, and then you kind of get disconnected from it. Well, what's your advice to people who are dealing with that? I would say this. You gotta look at it like this. Karma yoga is the yoga of working. So when you're feeling disconnected, you really got to reframe it because remember, everything is non-dual. So in reality, you could kind of say that there's no such thing as a non-spiritual action. So when you're working, you got to use your work as like a meditation. Like when I, before I became YouTube full-time, I used to work in a warehouse building lockers. So that was, that was one of my jobs. So one day I'm building a locker like, I build lockers for schools and, like, for businesses and stuff like that. So, one day, I'm building a locker. It's almost like big Legos. It's like, it's almost like playing with Legos. But before, I was framing it as, oh, I'm working. Then I reframed it. I'm like, damn. Like, I'm sitting on the floor like a, like a kid. And I'm like, yo, it's like you playing with Legos. This is a game. Like, you building a locker. And I would just listen to my spiritual books. And it, it just got me through it, the fact that, like, I'm I'm providing a service for, for people that I'm building a locker. So whatever job you do, whether it's, you know what I mean? Because I used to be a cart pusher at Walmart, too. Like, I did every, almost every job, not every job, but I did jobs people wouldn't think of. But it's like, you just got to go through it, look at it like it's part of your journey because you're going to learn something from whatever you're doing, whether that's patient, uh, endurance. So that's a part of your spiritual journey, you know what I mean? So you just got to incorporate your work and your spiritual journey. Right. And I, I, th I think what you just said about, you know, it kind of, you building lockers and viewing it as like Legos, it's like reigniting that childlike and that playful spirit inside of you. I know that's something that you've talked about is like, it's so important because like that, that brings back the joy of life when everything seems like it sucks and you're just doing these mundane things. Right. And then, and then eventually, cause I don't know, I got to do more research, but like people say socialism don't work. But it's like something got to give, though. Like, we definitely not meant to just be nine to five wage slaves working all fucking day and week. Like, cause that's why the world is the way it is now. People are unhappy because we're not. This is not natural. Even like prehistoric times, we had more time and leisure than we do now. You know what I mean? Like, because after the berries was picked and the which is the woman would do, then after the meat was conquered with the men we do there was nothing else to do you know what i mean we was just sitting there playing games or just having fun interacting with each other we wasn't working all day and all week that's not how it was so we're not even built to do this stuff so that's why it's good to have spiritual uh ashrams and stuff i think because 
I'm not gonna lie, if you really want to proceed uh progress spiritually, it is better to just completely dedicate it. But we live in America, so we don't have that culture of, oh, I could go live with this guru for <laughs> two years. You know what I'm saying? We don't got that culture. Right. Because after the two years, you come back and you have no money and you try to live in society and it's just not, it's just not going to work. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Unless, and go lie though. I ain't going to lie. Some, listen, spirituality is deep. Like if you really progress and practice, there's nothing on earth you can't have. Like if you really tap into that source, it ain't nothing on earth you can't have if you really progress. Because like think about Jesus and Buddha. They was quote unquote bums. <laughs> you feel me? Today we would look at them as like homeless people, but their energy and vibration was so high, the world submitted to them because they progressed that high on the spiritual chart. So you know what I mean? It's it's, it's definitely a sacrifice. Oh yeah, I would yeah, hundred percent. And you know, in terms of working, it's like we don't we're not when we sit down at these jobs all day and just sit and look at a computer. Though like, we're not built to sit down and do nothing all day, right? And like no no physical exercise, no movement because your body like you notice if you're ever just sitting um in your room, sometimes the negative thoughts will build up. Um and you know if you go outside and just go for a walk. Like people don't realize how much that helps and why does it help? Because you're moving your body. It is meant to move right. and expand. No, nah, that's that's one hundred percent facts. I be doing that sometimes, like I be too detached and I just like be in my house and I go for a walk. And immediately it's like a whole nother spiritual communication and I got like a trail. A trail in woods down down further down where I live at. Bro, it's just it's like the universe is speaking to you, it's like giving you life again. Cause it's like prana. You got more, more fresh prana coming into your system. Right. Exactly. Well, so I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a great conversation. Hey, no, appreciate you having me. Of course. Well, uh, so where, where can people check you out? Uh, my YouTube channel is Madu Shudana. That is hard to spell. So to make it simple, you could go to my Instagram. It's at Z215, Z A H215, and they got all my links. And I'm making a website soon with some new courses. So that's what it is. There you go. All right. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. All right. Appreciate it.